Hello students. In today's lecture, we will study about electrolytic cell and electrolysis. This is a very interesting and practical subject wherein we use these technologies in our everyday life. All the points discussed in this section are very important. Please note down as the same will help you in scoring marks in your academic and competitive examination. I welcome you once again. Electrolytic cells and electrolysis. Electrolysis is the process of decomposition of an electrolyte by passing electricity through its aqueous solution or molten state. Quantitative aspects of electrolysis. Michael Faraday was the first scientist who described the quantitative aspects of electrolysis. Now, Faraday's laws also flow from what has been discussed earlier. Faraday's first law of electrolysis states that the amount of chemical reaction which occurs at any electrode during electrolysis by a current is proportional to the quantity of electricity passed through the electrolyte solution or melt. So, the amount of chemical reaction is proportional to the quantity of electricity passed through the electrolyte and it can be represented as W. The amount of Q is proportional to Q. The Q is the quantity of electricity or it can be written as W is equal to Z into Q where Z is the electrochemical equivalent. That can be again written as Q is given by the relation I into T where I is the current and T is the time. So, W becomes W is equal to Z into I into T, I T. But Z, e, e chemical, electrochemical equation, equivalent is given by the relation Z is equal to equivalent weight of the substance divided by 96,500. Faraday's second law of electrolysis. It states that the amounts of different substances liberated by same quantity of electricity passing through the electrolyte solution are proportional to their chemical equivalent weights. And it can be written as W1 by W2 is equal to E1 by E2 where E is the equivalent weight. So that is equal to, we can write it as atomic mass of metal divided by number of electrons gained or lost by one atom or ion of the element. The quantity of electricity Q passed through the electrolyte is given by the relation Q is equal to I into T. So here Q is in coulombs when I is ampere and T is in seconds. Let us solve one numerical example. A solution of copper sulfate is electrolyzed for 10 minutes with a current of 1.5 amperes. What is the mass of copper deposited at the cathode? Answer. The given items in the question is T is equal to 600 second. Therefore, and current is also given as 1.5 amps. Therefore, charge is equal to I into T. I is the current. That is equal to 1.5 amps into 600 seconds. Multiplying, we get the answer as 900 coulombs. According to the reaction, 
that is <coughs> reduction CO2 plus ion combines with two electrons to form copper solid. So we require here two electrons R2F R2 into 96487 coulombs to deposit one mol or 63 grams of copper. Therefore, for 900 coulombs, the mass of copper deposited is 63 grams per mol into 900 divided by 2 into 96487 coulombs per mol that is equal to 0 0.2938 grams. Products of electrolysis. Products of electrolysis is dependent upon the nature of the material being electrolyzed and the types of electrodes being used. So the products depends on the nature of the material being electrolyzed and the type of electrodes. If the electrode is inert like platinum or gold, it does not participate in chemical reaction and it acts only as a source or sink for electrons. On the other hand, if the electrode is reactive, it participates in the electrode reaction. Thus, the product of electrolysis may be different for reactive and inert electrodes. The product of electrolysis depend on different oxidizing and reducing spe species present in the electrolytic cell and their standard electrode potential. So it not only depends on the nature of material of to be electrolyzed and type of electrode but also on the standard electrode pot potential as well as oxidizing and reducing species. Some electrochemical process, although feasible, are so slow kinetically that at lower voltages these do not seem to take place at and extra potential called war potential has to be applied which makes such process more difficult to occur. Discharge potential the minimum potential that must be applied across the electrodes to bring about the electrolysis and thus discharge the ions on the electrode is known as the discharge potential. It is the ability of ions to discharge first at electrodes. Let us examine a cases of electrolysis products. Case number one is molten NaCl. If you use molten NaCl, the products of electrolysis are sodium metal and chlorine gas. Here we have only one cation Na plus which is reduced at cathode and the reaction is shown on the screen and one anion that is Cl minus, which is oxidized at the anode to become to form Cl2 and one electron is liberated. This is a very simple reaction. Whereas in the case of electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride solution, the products are NaOH, Cl2, H2. In this case, besides Na plus and Cl minus ions, we also have H plus and OH minus ions along with solvent molecules of H2O. Thus, at the anode, there is a competition between two reduction reactions. That is, one is reduction of Na to form Na solid whose standard electrode potential is minus 2.71 which is given in standard electrode potential table of section 
of Nest equation that is electrochemical series. Please go back and refer for the different equations. Similarly, there is yet another equation H plus reduction. H plus combines with one electron to form half H2 gas whose E naught is 0 0.000 volts. Between the two, the reaction with higher value of E naught is preferred and therefore, therefore the rea reaction at cathode during electrolysis is the second one that is with standard E naught equal to 0, 0.00 that is H plus aqueous reduction of H plus aqueous to form half H2 gas. Let it be equation 6. But this H plus molecule is produced by dissociation of H2O. So H2O further gets reduced, absorbs an electron and becomes H2 gas plus OH minus molecule. Let it be equation 7. The net reaction is thus the sum of equation 6 and 7 and given by H2O liquid re reduces to form half H2 gas plus OH minus. Let it be equation 8. So further at anode we have a anion Cl minus which gets oxidized to form half Cl2 plus electron. So whose ele standard electrode potential is 1.36 volts. Let it be equation 9. Another reaction at anode is 2H2O liquid oxidizes to form oxygen gas plus 4 H plus ions plus 4 electrons and for this reaction E naught is 1.23 volts. Let it be equation 10. The reaction at anode given by equation 9 and 10 of the two the lower value is preferred generally preferred that is E naught is equal to 1.23 and therefore water should get oxidized in preference to Cl minus. But on account of due to war potential of oxygen reaction of 1.36 volts that is E naught cell equation number 9 is preferred. Thus the net reactions may be summarized as NaCl in water com combines to form Na aqueous plus Cl minus. Therefore, at cathode we have H2O liquid plus E is equal to half H2 gas plus OH minus aqueous and anode Cl oxidizes to form half Cl2 plus electron. Therefore, net reaction will be combined will be NaCl molecule plus H2O liquid form Na plus aqueous plus OH minus molecule plus half H2 gas plus half Cl2 gas. Now, if you want to see the effect of concentration, we have to apply and replace the standard electrode potential by electrode potentials given by Nernst, Nernst equation which we studied in section 2.3. So during the electrolysis of sulfuric acid for example there may be a case of concentrated sulfuric acid or dilute also. At anode we have H2O liquid reduces oxidizes to form oxygen plus 4H plus 4E as seen in equation 10 and another equation can be SO4 2 molecules of SO4 2 minus oxidize to form S2O8 plus 2E two electrons are free therefore whose E naught cell is 1.96 volts let it be equation 12. 
So for dilute sulfuric acid, if the case is if a dilute sulfuric acid, reaction 1 is preferred. That is E naught equal to 1.23 is preferred. For a concentrated, higher concentration of H2SO4, the reaction number 12, that is E naught equal to 1.96 volts is preferred. The products of electrolysis discussed in the previous slide in respect of molten NaCl, aqueous NaCl, dilute H2SO4 and concentrated H2SO4 are depicted in the table shown on the screen. Products at cathode as well as anode as well as the reactions involved at cathode and anode are also displayed in detail. Please pause this video and go through all the reactions shown. Batteries. Any battery or soil that we use as source of electrical energy is basically a galvanic cell where the chemical energy of the redox reaction is converted into electrical energy. A battery in use should be reasonably light, compact, and its voltage should not vary appreciably during its use. There are mainly two types of batteries, primary batteries as and secondary batteries. Primary batteries. Dry cell. In the primary batteries, the reactions occur only once and after the use over a period of time, battery becomes dead and cannot be reused again. For example, dry cell known as Leclanc cell is used in clocks. The cell consists of a zinc container that also acts as anode and cathode is a carbon graphite and rod surrounded by powdered manganese dioxide and carbon shown in the figure here. Zinc cup acts as an anode and magnesium dioxide, carbon black plus NH4Cl paste act as a cathode. Cathode is the carbon rod at the center. And this is MnO2 is the electrolyte. The space between the electrodes is filled by moist paste of ammonium chloride NH4Cl and zinc chloride ZnCl2. The cell has a potential of approximately 1.5 volts. Mercury cell is shown in the figure 2 below. Mercury cell suitable for low current devices like hearing aids, watches, etc. consists of zinc mercury amalgam as anode. See here the zinc mercury amalgam acts as anode and paste of HgO and carbon as the cathode. Cathode is here in the figure blue color. The electrolyte is a paste of KOH and ZnO. The cell potential is approximately 1.35 volts and remains constant during its life as the overall re reaction does not involve any ion in the solution whose concentration can change during its lifetime. So the speciality of mercury cell is the life remains constant. The voltage 1.35 volts remains constant during its life as the overall reaction does not involve any ion in the solution whose concentration can change the change during the lifetime of the cell. Secondary batteries. A secondary battery after use can be recharged by passing current through it in the opposite direction so that it can be used again. A good secondary cell can undergo a large number of discharging and charging cycles. First one is lead storage battery. The most important secondary cell is a lead storage battery shown in figure commonly used in automobiles as well as 
inverters. The lead storage battery consists of a lead anode. See here, if there is an anode which is made up of lead and a grid of lead packed with lead dioxide, PVI oxide as cathode. See, these are the cathode shown in light pink color. A 38% solution of sulfuric acid, 38% of sulfuric acid as shown in the figure is used as an electrolyte. On charging the battery, the reaction is reversed and PBSO4 solid on anode and cathode is converted into lead and the PBO2 respectively. Nickel cadmium cell. Another important secondary cell is nickel cadmium cell which has longer life than lead storage cell but more expensive to manufacture. Fuel cells. The galvanic cells that are designed to convert energy of combustion fuels like hydrogen, methane, methanol, etc. directly into the electrical energy are called fuel cells. So it is also a galvanic cell that which is designed to convert energy of combustion of fuels like hydrogen, methane, methanol, etc. directly to electrical energy are called fuel cells. Fuel cells use the reaction of hydrogen with oxygen to form water. The cell was used for providing electrical power in Apollo space program. The water vapors produced during the reaction were condensed and added to the drinking water supply for the astronauts. In the cell, shown in the figure, hydrogen and oxygen are bubbled through porous carbon electrodes. Or these are the porous carbon electrodes, anode and cathode, into the concentrated aqueous sodium hydroxide solution. Catalyst like finely divided platinum or palladium metal are incorporated into the electrodes for increasing the rate of electrode reactions. The cell runs continuously as long as the reactants are supplied. Fuel cells produce electricity with an efficiency of about 70% as compared to the thermal plants whose efficiency is only about 40%. There has been tremendous progress in development of new electrode materials, better catalysts and electrolytes for increasing the efficiency of fuel cells. These have been used in automobiles on an experimental basis. Fuel cells are pollution free and in view of their future importance, a variety of fuel cells have been fabricated and tried. Reactions at anode and cathode in respect of dry cell, mercury cell, lead storage cell and nickel cadmium cell and fuel cell are shown in the table. So, in case of dry cell, ZNS oxidizes to form ZN2 plus 2E. At cathode, MnO2 plus NH4 plus E gets reduced to form MnOOH plus NH3. Mercury cell. In case of mercury cell, ZNHG plus 2OH minus combined to form ZnOS plus H2O plus 2E. In, at, in a cathode, in respect of mercury cell, HgO plus H2O plus 2E combined to form Hg liquid, liquid mercury plus 2OH minus. The reactions, anode reactions in respect of lead storage cell 
nickel cadmium cell and fuel cell are also shown on the screen. Please note down and go through it in detail. Corrosion. The slow eating away of metals when exposed to atmosphere is called corrosion. The rusting of iron, tarnishing of silver, development of green coating on the copper and bronze are some of the examples of corrosion. It causes enormous damage to the buildings, bridges, ships and to all objects made of metals, especially that of iron. In corrosion, a metal is oxidized by loss of electrons to the oxygen and formation of oxides. Corrosion of iron, which is called a rusting, occurs in presence of water and air. The corrosion may be considered as an electrochemical phenomenon at a particular spot of an object made of iron where oxygen takes place and that spot behaves as anode. See here, this particular spot shown in light brown color, Fe2O3, is behaves as an anode. The reaction at anode is 2FeS oxidizes to form 2Fe2 plus plus 4E. Here, the absolute the standard electrode potential for conversion from Fe2 plus to Fe is minus 4.0.44 volts taken from this, the standard oxidation and reduction table. Another spot on the surface acts as the cathode. So at cathode, oxygen plus 4H aqueous gets reduced by accepting four electrons to form 2H2O and its standard electrode potential from H plus to O2 to H2O is 1.23 volts. The overall reaction is 2Fe in solid plus O2 gas plus four molecules of hydrogen combined to form 2Fe2 plus molecule plus 2H2O, that is liquid. So, standard electrode potential E0 is 1.67. Prevention of corrosion is prime importance. It not only saves money, but also helps in preventing accidents such as bridges, bridge collapse or failure of key component due to corrosion. One of the simplest methods of preventing corrosion is to prevent the surface of the metallic object to come in contact with atmosphere. This is done by covering the surface with paint or by chemicals like bisphenol. Yet another simple method is to cover the surface by other metals like Yes, tin, zinc, etc. that are inert or react to save the object. An electrochemical method is to provide a sacrificial electrode of another metal like Mg, Zn, etc. which corrodes itself but saves the object. Yet another topic of importance is hydrogen economy. Hydrogen provides an alternative as it combustion results in water only. Hydrogen production must come from splitting water using solar energy. At present, the main source of energy that is driving our economy is the fossil fuels such as coal, oil and gas. As more people on the planet aspire to improve their standard of living, their energy requirement is increasing day by day. In fact, the per capita consumption of energy use is a measure of development of any country. Of course, it is assumed that energy is used for 
productive purpose and not merely waste it. We are already aware that carbon dioxide produced by combustion of fossils, fossil fuels is resulting in greenhouse effect. This is leading to a rise in temperature of Earth's surface, causing polar ice to melt and ocean levels to rise. To rise. This will flood low-lying areas along with the coast and some island nations such as Maldives face total submergence. In order to avoid such a catastrophe, we need to limit our use of carbonaceous fuels and hydrogen provides an ideal alternative as it is combustion results in water only. Hydrogen production must come from splitting water using solar energy. So the reaction is H2O forms H2 gas plus oxygen. Combustion of hydrogen in fuel cell will produce water. That is H2 gas plus oxygen combined to form H2O. Therefore, hydrogen can be used as a renewable and non-polluting source of energy. This is the vision of hydrogen economy. Both the production of hydrogen by electrolysis of water and hydrogen combustion in a fuel will be very important in future. And both these technologies are based on electrochemical principles. Now we will summarize the unit 2, that is electrolysis. A chemical, electrochemical cell consists of two metallic electrodes dipping in electrolytic solution. Thus, an important component of electrochemical cell is the ionic conductor or electrolyte. Electrochemicals are of two types. Galvanic cell, which converts chemical energy of a spontaneous reduction reaction to into electrical work. Whereas in electrolytic cell, the electrical energy is used to carry out non-spontaneous reduction reaction. The standard electrode potential for any electrode Dipping in appropriate solution is defined with respect to the stranded electrode potential of hydrogen electrode and which is taken as a zero. That is E0 value for hydrogen electrode is zero. The standard electrode potential can be obtained by taking the different standard potentials of cathode and anode. That is E0 of cell is equal to E0 cathode minus E0 anode. The standard potential of cells are related to st standard Gibbs energy given by the relation delta R G0 is equal to minus N F into E0 of cell and equilibrium constant delta R G0 equals minus RT into natural log of K of the reaction taking place in the cell. Concentration depends on potentials of electrodes and cells are given by Nernst equation. Concentration dependence of potentials of electrodes and its cells are given by Nernst equation. The conductivity kappa of an electrolytic solution depends on concentration of the electrolyte. Nature of solvent and temperature. Molar conductivity lambda m is equal to kappa by c where kappa is the kappa is the conductivity and c is the concentration conductivity decreases but molar conductivity increase with decreases decrease in concentration it increases so any decrease in concentration will result in increase in molar conductivity delta m it increases slowly with decreases in concentration for strong electrolytes white in while the increase is very steep for 
weak electrolytes in very dilute solution. Kohal-Rausch found that molar conductivity at infinite dilution for an electrolyte is the sum of contribution of the molar conductivity of ions in which it dissociates. It is known as law of independent migration of ions and has many applications. Ions conduct electricity through solution, but oxidation and reduction of ions takes place at the electrodes in an electrochemical cell. Batteries and fuels are very useful forms of galvanic cells. Corrosion of metals is essentially an electrochemical phenomena. Electrochemical principles are relevant to the hydrogen economy. Multiple choice questions. First question. In an electrolytic cell, the flow of electron is, four options are given. Option A, from cathode to anode in the solution. Option B is from cathode to anode through external supply. Option C is from cathode to anode through internal supply. Option D is from anode to cathode through internal supply. So you have to remember, pause the video, recall your knowledge and answer it. The correct answer is option C, that is from cathode to anode through internal supply. <coughs> Next question. How long would it take to deposit 50 grams of aluminum from an electrolyte cell containing Al2O3 using a current of 105 amps? Please read the question and answer. For our Options are given. Option A, 1.54 H hours. Option B, 1.42 hours. Option C, 1.32 hours. And option D, 2.515 hours. Please pause the question and put your answer. So, in the given cell, electrolytic cell, the reaction can be written as aluminum ions, three plants ions, get reduced to form aluminum. Equivalent weight of aluminum, we know that it is given by 27 by 3, that is equal to 9. We also know from Faraday's law, W is equal to Z into I into T. That is, weight is equal to Z into I current into T. Therefore, the value of Z is equivalent weight is equivalent weight divided by 96500. So, W equals equivalent weight divided by 96500 into I into T. Therefore, T is equal to W into 96500 divided by equivalent weight into I. That is equal to 50 into 96500 divided by 9 into 105. So, this is simplifying. It is 5105.82 seconds. Converting and dividing by 16 to 60, we get 1.42 hours. This option is available as option B. Please mark it. Next question is, the chart required for reducing one mole of MnO4 to MnO, Mn2 plus is? Four options are given. Option A, 1.93 into 10 to the power of 5. Option B, 2.895 into 10 to the power of 5. Option C, 4.28 into 10 to the power of 5. And option D is 4.825 into 10 to the power of 5. Pause the video and mark your answer and I will give the calculations. MnO4 
gets reduced to mn2 plus so one mole of mno4 and five moles of electrons and one mole of mn2 plus so five moles of electrons is equal to five faradays so quantity of charge required is 5 into 96 500 that is 4.825 into 10 to the power of 5 <coughs> mark the correct answer and this option is given as option d please mark it next question how much electricity in terms of faraday is required to produce 100 grams of calcium from molten CaCl2? Please read the question again and I, the answer is one of the four options. A, 1 farad, B is 2 farads, C is 3 farads and D is 5 farads. So mark, pause the video and mark the correct answer. So the calculation is ClC2 gets oxidized to form Ca2 plus plus 2 Cl minus. That is Ca2 plus gets oxidized, gets reduced forming Ca. So we can write 2 moles gives 1 mole that is 40 grams. So 40 grams of calcium gives 2F. So 100 grams of Ca gives 5F. So the correct answer is D. That is, please mark it, option D. Next question. The reaction which is taking place in nickel cadmium battery can be represented by four reactions are given on the screen and the reaction A is Cd plus NiO3 plus 2H2O forms CdOH2 plus NiOH2. Option B is Cd plus 20 ions forms Ni plus CdOH2. Option C is Ni plus CdOH2 forms Cd plus NiOH2. And option D is NiOH2 plus CdOH2. That gives Ni plus Cd plus 2H2O. So at anode, the electrode is Cd, cadmium. At cathode, we have what? NiO2 and electrolyte is KOH for nickel cadmium battery. So at anode, Cd plus two molecules of OH combined to form CdOH2 plus two electrons. So at cathode NiO2 plus 2H2O plus 2E, that, that is it gets reduced forming NiOH2 plus 2, 2OH minus. Cd plus NiO3 plus 2H2O combined to form CdOH2 plus NiOH2. So the correct equation is option A. Please mark it. <coughs> Next question. The overall reaction of a hydrogen oxygen fuel is four options are given. 2H2 gas plus O2 gas. H2 hydrogen plus oxygen gas combined to form water that is liquid state. 2H2 gas plus aqueous OH solution combined to form 2H2O liquid plus 4E. And option C is oxygen plus two molecules of H2O plus four electrons get reduced to form 4OH minus. And option D is 4OH minus molecules Combined with four electrons to form two H2O. So we have you have to mark the correct answer. Please pause the video and mark your answer. Meanwhile, I will give the answer. At anode, two H2 plus four OH molecules combined to form four H2O. 
liquid plus four electrons. That is the reduction process. That is oxidation process. At cathode, O2 plus H2O combine with four electrons to form four OH minus aqueous. So the overall summing up overall reaction is 2H2 gas plus O2 gas form 2H2O. So this option is given as option A. Please mark it. Next question. Which of the following reaction does not take place during rusting? Four options are given. Please read the options and mark your correct answer. Here, it, it the option is reaction. We have to answer. Ask question is does not take place during rusting. The correct option is Fe2 plus ion does not react with dry oxygen. So option B does not take place. So please mark it. Next question. The difference between electrode potentials of two electrodes when no current is drawn through the cell is called. So here I read the question once again. The difference between electrode potentials of two electrodes when no current is drawn through the cell is called. Four options are there. Cell potential, option B, cell EMF, option C, potential difference and option D, cell voltage. Pause the video and mark your hands, correct answer. Meanwhile, I will give the correct answer. The correct answer is option B. Please mark it. Next question. So these questions we are taking from exemplar problems of and PYQs. Question 1. Which cell will measure standard electrode potential of copper electrode? Four options are given. Four options are given. Please read all the options and mark your answer. So you have to remember and mark that option C is the correct answer to measure standard electrode potential of copper electrode. Which of the following statements is correct? So please read all the four options. Option A, E cell and delta RG of reaction both are extensive properties. E cell, electric potential of cell and delta RG of cell reaction both are intensive properties. Option C, E cell is intensive property while delta RG of cell reaction is an extensive property. Option D is E cell is extensive property while delta RG cell reaction is an intensive property. You have to remember and mark the correct answer as C. That is E cell is an intensive property while delta RG of the cell reaction is an extensive property. Next question is a neat question which I will read. For a cell involving one electron, E0 cell is equal to 0.59 volts. Please note it is E0 is 0.59 volts at 298 Kelvin. The equilibrium constant of cell is, so we have to find the value of equilibrium constant. And it is given, the formula is given 2.303 RT divided by F is equal to, that is E0 cell is equal to 0.59 volts at T equal to 98 Kelvin. <coughs> you have to remember calculation and you have to mark the correct answer as D. Next question is identify the correct statement amongst the four options. Option A corrosion of Iron can be minimized by forming a contact with another metal with higher potential. Option B is iron corrodes in oxygen 
free water. Option C is corrosion of iron can be minimized by forming an Im impermeable barrier at its surface. Option D is iron corrodes more rapidly in salt water because of its chemical potential is higher. Please read the options and mark your answer. I, meanwhile, I will give the correct answer. When an impermeable barrier is formed at the surface of iron, then oxygen and moisture cannot attack the metal. Hence, its corrosion is prevented. So, you please mark the answer C as the correct answer. We come to the conclusion of the chapter on electrolysis and electrolytic cell. Next, we will start a new unit, unit 3, with lecture 1, and the title is Chemical Kinetics. Till then, goodbye.